Hi everyone, my name is Carol Rado. Now, Newcastle versus Arsenal has just kicked off and I'm hoping by the time we're done this show in by the time we're done with this show in about 30 minutes, Arsenal will have a few goals up. How about that? Uh, well, those are now um with the inconsistency of Arsenal, I just want to wait and see what's going to happen, uh, Carol. I wish Newcastle all the best. Hey, <laughs> Masharia, I can throw you off this set. What do you mean? Uh -huh. Guys, over the weekend, we were at the Karen Country Club, yes, for Safaricom for the Safaricom Golf Tour. Now, it was a fantastic weekend, by oh, the way. Absolutely. On uh, Friday, it started with uh, Don Riaro. He's the guy who won on Friday. Okay. So he's going to be at the final at Vipingo Ridge in August. And then on Saturday, on Saturday, we had the junior tournaments. And I need to say congratulations to Muridi Gatu and Rohini Shah. Those are the boys and girls who got the overall uh, titles for the juniors. Now, Safaricom Golf Tour is all about taking golf to the people. People. On Saturday as well, there were these golf clinics that happened for kids in the area, mm. and uh, they were trying out golf for the first time. Kenny, I was with you. We were seeing some of that wow. talent. Some like, of those what? kids with the swings that they have These right now. These are juniors. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah, amazing talent coming out of the Safaricom Golf Tour. We also caught up with a guy from Nanyuki who was involved in the Safaricom Golf Tour in the initial, the inaugural tournament way back in January. Yeah. And he said the development of the youth that they found is going extremely well. And remember, these are kids who are not ordinarily involved in golf, who tried it out for the first time, yeah. showed some talent. They've been adopted by the Junior Golf Foundation in partnership with Safaricom. And uh, yeah, it's all about taking golf to the people. Safaricom Golf Tour, where every shot is an, an opportunity. opportunity. Now, yeah. joining us for today's discussion is the chairman of Zoo FC, Ken Ochieng. Ken Abariako. <laughs> I'm Zuri, I'm Zuri. By the way, Ken, we're, we're bringing the Safaricom Golf Tour to uh, Kericho in a couple of weeks. Oh, yes, by I the way. I hope you'll join us. Are you going to host us? <laughs> I will, I will, but I, I don't play golf. Aye, well, it's time you start. Let's get into the yeah. business of football, Ken, because you have been running Zoo. There's been a lot of drama around Zoo over the last couple of uh, years where you saw yourself being relegated, um, over an incident that you highlighted yourself. First of all, tell us about that before we get to uh, uh, the meat of the discussion today. Well, uh, Zoo are currently playing in the N N NSL after we got relegated on by FIFA uh, on account of us uh, being accused of uh, match manipulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you remember well, I'm the one who got who whistle blue on this thing, especially in the Kenyan uh, football scene. And it's becoming even more a menace right now that uh, we don't have anyone answerable mm -hmm. in terms of uh, iteration. Yeah, just because, to sum up. Uh, sorry. Sorry, just to sum up Sorry? what happened back then, uh, you realized that some of your players were selling games. You're the one who highlighted. You're the one who reported to the Federation. And then you're the one who got yep. banned. <laughs> so, yeah, but then uh, that was the same time you were having issues with the, the uh, for, well, I don't know whether to call him former chairman, the chairman who's now out, Nick <laughs> Mwendwa, um, over that uh, broadcasting deal. But lots of drama because you guys were being, they were forcing this deal down your throat as clubs. Do you feel that clubs actually have a say in Kenya when it comes to football? I, I believe the problem with Kenyan football are the clubs ourselves. We don't know how much power we yield. Yes. And if we stuck together as a, a people, then uh, definitely we'll get somewhere in terms of football progress. But uh, we are so disorganized as uh, stakeholders that even agitating for a right is so difficult. And uh, that's the most annoying part of this business. Mm. Yeah, because I remember with that broadcasting deal, it was just Zoo, Madhari, uh, and then Gormahia, Gormahia, although the Secretary yeah. General went behind the chairman's and back signed. and signed the deal. Yeah. Um, those were the clubs, and I think Ulinzi Stars, who were against it, and every other club just signed. So, of course, when you're on your own, it's harder to push an agenda, as you say, if the clubs are not united. But I want to bring yeah. to the discussion now, Football has been under the care of the FKF Caretaker Committee. Their mandate has ended. Now we have the, almost the same people in the Transitional Committee sitting there as a club chairman. Are you seeing any hope in all this? Um, mm. For me, it's a circus. The question I might ask you, Carol, 
Mm -hmm. What are we transitioning to? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> yeah. Good question. See, when the minister appointed the caretaker committee, it had certain mandates which we all know they never fulfilled. Right. And uh, this they could have done for before they appointed this uh, uh, so-called uh, transition committee. The, the least they could have done was at least made recommendations in their final report that will be having a transition report, a transition uh, a transition committee. Mm. And uh, if you look at the sports act, uh, you will uh, notice at uh, the section which they purport to use to appoint this uh, transition committee that uh, a committee can only be appointed after recommendation of an inspection. Correct. Mm -hmm. That inspection, if uh, you are following the court matter where Nick Mwendo had sued uh, the cabinet secretary as regards the former committee, the caretaker committee, mm -hmm. the judge last week ordered uh, the registrar of sports to furnish the federation with that report in 14 days. Mm -hmm. And now we have a transition committee which was appointed in retrospect on Friday to have a mandate which uh, was to commence on Tuesday or Wednesday last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did the FKF have an opportunity to look at that report? And it is on the basis of non-performance non, uh, of what was recommended in that report that a committee can be established. Correct. Where FK had an opportunity not to perform any recommendations in that report. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's the... That this is a different committee. This is just the same committee as the previous one, save for the name. Mm -hmm. And before the Sports Act says that uh, a, any committee appointed by the minister cannot exceed six months of, uh, in... Uh, in their mandate, yeah. mm -hmm. we are having a, um, a five-month um, extension, five five weeks extension. Sorry, uh, to what end? Mm. You see, just postponing problems with FIFA. We'd rather we meet as stakeholders and engage FIFA so that probably we have a normalization committee to take over. Actually, or we have as to how we we can engage further. As a football community, so you but think now. Sorry, sorry, to, sorry to cut you short. So you think that um, basically this would be better run instead of a transition committee to have a stakeholder uh, kind of committee, which is involving FIFA, which now has the output of which should be the return of Kenyan football to normalcy of some sort, uh, whether it is going into elections. Is that what you think would work better instead of having this? transitional committee kind of operation. True, true. And the more we, we continue having committees after committee, yeah. the next one we are going to have a burial committee for the football uh, <laughs> federation. We laugh, but it's no laughing matter. By the way, it's not a laughing Ken, matter. as a club owner, <laughs> yeah. tell us what are the challenges you're going through um, in light also of what has happened with, the, say, Madari United yeah. and some of our other clubs who are not speaking up but are going through financial problems. I mean, AFC Leopards are lucky they can call a Harambe and yeah. but that's not a solution. Up, but that's not the solution. Yeah. You know what people fail to know? Football is not just a matter of having fixtures and honoring matches. Mm. Mm -hmm. There are many other things involved in football. For instance, dispute resolution. There will always be much the dispute resolution, uh, disputes. Now, the caretaker committee and uh, the transition committee do not have capacity For to disputes. determine this. Yeah. We, I, I remember I represented uh, Dandora Love and uh, Sofapaka on uh, a matter which could only be dealt with uh, by uh, uh, one of those committees uh, that the Federation has. We had to go all the way to the sports tribunal. And mm. the sports tribunal correctly observed that the transition committee, now formerly known as the caretaker committee, mm -hmm. did not have capacity to solve much the disputes. Mm -hmm. If mm. let's say today, for instance, the case of Gormaya, 
and Vihiga United. Mm. It, you know that matter has been pending for, for ages. It has not been decided. And the ambulance fiascos in uh, KPL and NSL. Mm. In NSL, we have match day disputes running back to the second match day, oh, and which have not been yeah, 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 yeah. We have uh, about seven first leg matches which have not been played. Mm. So how are we in a league where the first leg has not even been done? Dispute resolution is one of the problems. We also have problems with the uh, referee's appointment. Yes, for a fact, referees have not been paid for se had not been paid at the time for several weeks. And when you don't pay your referees who are going out to refer, who, yeah, what are we who doing? in charge of the games? Whoever pays them, that's who their you allegiance see, is to. You see, for me, it's 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 basically back to what Ken was talking about. Um, mm. If you have games which have not been decided from week one or week two or game mm. game three. What league are we talking about? Because these guys have been playing games knowing that whatever points we have, there's this dispute. So, Ken, as we wrap, what is the solution as a club owner? What do you think is the solution to this football mess that is going on? Should this league be counted or cancelled? What next? The solution lies in appointment of a normalization committee by FIFA that will be able to cure every mess and... Uh, whatever the government did not do. That is, we can have a constitutional review through a normalization committee. We can have a new office. And those who are accused of whatever can have an opportunity to present uh, their candidature if uh, they are still interested in running football. And uh, with that, we can... Uh, be back in uh, FIFA's good books and we proceed with our football. As, you, as it is right now, I think we are just playing friendlies. Mm. You're just I playing friendlies. Friendly. So you would, also th you would also support this league not being counted, just being cancelled like it never happened? There are so many ills that have happened in this league that any sane person who's been in football cannot sustain it and say that we have a winner yeah. or we have a promotion yeah. or we have a relegation. Based it, on the fact that we have functional leagues and competitions committee, judicial bodies, and all those sorts of committees, mm. you cannot run a, a, a federation with a, with a massive workforce of probably 150 people and run it by uh, for five people. That's yeah. impossible. There will be conflict of interest. Yeah. Yeah. There will be... Uh, there will be so many things that, uh, that, that, will, that will, come will not up. allow us to go for young. Yeah. Okay. Ken, Ken, thank you. Thank you for speaking to us today. I know we just uh, touched the tip of the iceberg. Maybe in a couple of weeks we'll invite you back so that we can uh, have this conversation again. I know it's so frustrating for these club owners because they've spent money on the league this season. It's been so hard for them to get sponsorship with the uh, uncertainty in Kenyan football. And these guys, I know for a fact, Ken literally funds that, uh, uh, that team from his pocket. He is, of course, a practicing lawyer. That's why you could hear him speaking loyal, legal speak sometimes. Yeah. But it's hard on anyone trying to run a club in Kenya today. I just hope solutions come soon. Guys, we're going to take a break when we come back. We're going to look at uh, some of the other things that are happening in the world of sport, including uh, the NBA, of course. And uh, yeah, Roland Garros is coming up. Why is that relevant? We'll tell you in a bit.